So something came to me as I was um, doing my cold shower. Um, actually, several things, and kind of like more for speculative purposes. Um, what was that one? Was a thought. If, because I was thinking about my friend, and by the way, is has always been like hot to me. <laughs> He is Aries. I'll look into his chart actually, but um, uh, like his sun sign is in Aries. But the thing is, I was thinking about the whole, you know, when it comes to relationships, any sort of relationships. You know, I was thinking it was just some thoughts that come into my head, and it's just like, okay, so if you're if you're just talking about sun signs, just simple sun signs, right? If you meet someone whatever, if it's romantic, friendship, whatever it is. And something that came to me, and I'm, I'm pretty sure some astrologers have sort of noticed this, but it just came to me as like, so if you're in a certain, if your true charts are like, if you look at synastry, if you study synastry and you see the degree differences between your sons, if you know each other long enough, because you know, the sun goes through one sign, the whole sign. Let's say your sun sign was in zero degrees, right? Or one. By the time you get to 30, by the time you turn 30, it goes into another sign. Possibly another house. That is, if you're using whole sign house, I use Placidus quite often. Sometimes I'll use the Regimentis. It's, it's for R.A. It's for um, I've used that a little bit. But equal house signs, is that the whole sign house? I'm not sure. The houses are still kind of like, I don't play around with them that, with them that much. But even if you move to another sign, if you think about it, by the time you, so for me, like by the time I reach the age of 60, because my, my sun sign was in 23 degrees Libra. Or was it 26? <laughs> I forgot the degrees. But, um, 23. Uh, 26. So when I turned 30, it was already in 26 Scorpio. Meaning, like, we're talking about progressions here, of course. So progressions, but also, like, kind of like, maybe synastry. For those who don't know what synastry is, it's relationship astrology. It's how you come are compatible and necessar not necessarily romantic. Usually it is. But it could be also other relationships. I just did one the other day, two day yesterday, no, two days ago, where I read someone's chart quickly and I compared her chart with her two sons. And it was interesting because it was like, I did what you call like a multi-composite. I looked at it before, I played around with it a little bit, compared myself with if I, and this with this guy, and then with the guy, if there was like the three of us together, whether as lovers or as friends, doesn't matter, and how do we get along. But then I noticed that when I did the multi-composite, it becomes like one chart. Or at least multi-composite, you'll see. Um, the point is that, I'm going to go backtrack, <laughs> that if I, by the time I reach, let's say 30, so 30, 60, by the time I'm 60, I'll be at 26 degrees uh, Sagittarius. Okay, so around there. So a few years after that, let's say four years after that so by the time i'm around 64 it's already in capricorn so even if that were the case if you think about it the longer you relationship you have with someone because you're going to know your you know your your journey yourself you're getting to know yourself you improve right you 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 still have your energy that you carry through in your birth which is like okay so if you're one degree let's say pisces or one degree I don't know, Aquarius or maybe Capricorn, whatever. By the time you reach the age of 60, so you go 30 each time. Every 30 years, it goes to a new... It's a, There's a possibility of it going to... It will go into a new sign. Even if it's one degree, it will go into the new sign. 30, that's fine. But I'm talking about when we go into... I suppose... For me... What I feel is 
interesting is that if let's say my friend um his aries let's say okay, okay i'm gonna look into his chart right now no i didn't just show you this one but so his son was in 15 degrees aries so when he's 30 when he turned 30 it was in 15 degrees taurus so i can tell right away he's already past 30. let's see here 15 degrees so that means i count five more it's his progression chart shows as of today is um so with this uh, 30 so he's uh, 30 years old 35 he's now 38 years old right so that's just the sun so by the time he turns 60 60 something which is going to be when i'm already in late my son is going to be in late sagittarius his will be in his will be in uh in gemini it's kind of like a sextile approach to it every time you have 60 degrees right it goes sextile for those who already know aspects that's what it is right so it'll be 15 degrees gemini but add another because it's 15 you add another 15 years to that by the time he's 60 so when he's 75 it'll be in well technically three six nine by the time he's 90 it'll be in cancer so by that time he'll he'll already feel like he's at home but let's go backtrack and get a little bit more specific so let's say okay so he's by the time he's 60 15 degrees gemini right you count 15 degrees more than that 75 so by the time he's 75 he's already his sign is already his son is already progressed into it it progresses he's gonna feel like he's more uh if he resonates with being at home feel more comfortable at home and by that time the, the, the by that time for myself i'm talking about now connecting it with as if we were in this relationship so if you are 75 and i'm already at like uh let's say even like so I'm going to 60 and 15 years after that. Like, so if when I'm 75, let, let me calculate that. So it's 15. So if I'm, if I'm, by the time I'm 60, it'll be three, six, it'll be in 26 degrees. So by the time I'm 64, that's so weird. Why would I be younger than him? So the cal, do you get what I'm saying to the calculations is that, <laughs> It'll be that as the, the point I'm making right now is that the longer you have any sort of relationship with someone, sooner or later, something will start to change. And it almost like maybe it'll create some sort of match. I don't know. Like, because if it's going, if his sign is going to be in cancer, or his sign is going to progress rather, okay, progress into cancer, that ties in with my fourth house placement of my own birth natal sign. I just thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, okay, huh. So in a way, he'll kind of tap into that. But when I turn into, but when I get into like that time, so let's say, let let me do the calculations. So it's 15 degrees. So 30, 60, 75. So 75 years after. So when 75 years later from the time he was born, compared to 75 years to time when I was born so it'll be 30 that was in Scorpio another 30 which is 60 which is going to be in you know in Sagittarius it's 26 degrees so add seven add 15 years to that because we're kind of count 75 by his by his like his structure his thing so 75 uh, 15 years after Sagittarius so 15 degrees after is 26 Sagittarius so I would just say 4 into Capricorn so 75 minus 4 is 70 is um, is I just need to no, just, well 15 minus 4 is 11 so by 11 degrees Capricorn which for me will be in the uh, in the fifth in my sixth house it'll feel like it's in my sixth house sort of thing but it'll still be i believe four 
if I go into a progression chart right now, like my progression chart, and I go into like actual progress chart, I'll see what house it's in. So that means we're going to have to count 75 years from the time I was born. So 19, I was born 1980. What is that? 1980. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's see the calculator here. plus 75 so by 2055 I will be that age that he's 75 something like that okay so let's say same date as today and I look at my progress chart 2055 right see my son will be 11 degrees I was right 11 degrees it'll be conjunct mercury ah, it'll be a lot more communicative <laughs> but in a Capricorn way so that in turn will be, his son will be in about zero, 01 degree or 0 degrees in Cancer. So it won't necessarily be like opposite of him, but what that would mean is that I would tie in with his house placement while he would tie in with my house placement, like our natal placements. Because my son was in the fourth house, Okay. And it was in cancer. But his his sun sign. Okay. His sun sign was in uh was in Aries, which is 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 it was in tenth house, which is ruled by Capricorn. Do you see what I mean? So so do you see what the the math behind it is interesting because it's like, oh it'll move by basically there's a kind of a pace that's happening there's a kind of like parallelism happening not necessarily parallelism but his it's not parallelism <laughs> but you get what i'm saying i hope you get what i'm saying the point is that when we get to know each other whoever it is we're get to know eventually there's some sort of like balance that will happen at least because for his my house or at least our, our signs are opposite each other so that means by the time when I say opposite, I don't mean like by degree. I mean like the feeling. Libra, Aries. So what that means is that he's going to jump into my sort of like, he'll still be in the same house, but he's going to be in Cancer. So it's going to feel like he's going to be feeling that. Like it's going to come like, oh, interesting. So 70, but then I'm looking at his chart now and I looked at it just now and calculated 75 years after that, but that doesn't make sense for him because 75 years after he was born, he was born um, 1986. So we add six years to that. So not 2025, not 2055, but rather 2061. By 2061, we're just using use this date today and we're looking at just his actual progression chart I was looking at natal progression com compared like it was a comparison see uh, it'll still be 28 degrees in Gemini did I miscalculate that so he was born 1986 so we have to calculate 75 years from that 1986 plus 75 yeah, 2061. Did I miscalculate that? Either way, the point is, really the point is, I'm making right now, is that when we get to know someone long enough, even past the, t past the age of 90, we'll still feel, there's, there's a sort of like, I don't know, there might be. So let's give it a try. So let's say there's one person who is born, let's say, Taurus in the 11th house right so he has like acquiring qualities about him let's say that's in let's go with one degree make it easy let's say his Taurus sign was in one degree but he's in the 11th house but your let's say your Leo your friend is Taurus yours your Leo so we're just talking about the suns okay you have the suns so you have your son in Leo but it's in the 8th house. Okay. Um, 
and his, um, your, his or her, whatever, their um, sun sign was in Taurus in the 11th house. So every time you, if you can imagine, just visualize it, you have your 8th house here, or his, your 8th house here, you, Leo, and then his um, sun, Taurus. So it's basically, you're basically kind of, it might square. Let's say you have both 1 degree, 1 degree. Right, one degree Leo, yours is one degree Leo, what his is one degree Taurus. As you get older, it turns, it, tr it goes like this. It goes, shh, or is it from your view, it's like this? <laughs> it goes this way, right? So, anyways, it goes into one degree th in 30 degrees, in 30 years you'll be in a different sign. So yours, you're going to be in uh, Virgo. Your, your feelings, again, we're talking about progression here. You're going to be in Virgo, and his is going to be in, in Gemini. Right? Still going to be square each other. Um, but take a look at it this way. Let's try it this way. So you have... I'm just experimenting right now, okay, just to let you know, it's just an, it's an experiment. I love experimenting. So, um, and so 60 years later, okay, when you're 60 years old, or it's just 60 years later, um, your signs, his sign is going to be Taurus. It's going to be not in Taurus, not in Gemini, but in Cancer. Yours is going to be in Libra, right? So it's going to be in Libra. It's still going to be square. So that means you're still going to have these challenges. But by this time, if the houses haven't really changed, depending on what house you're using, but typically if it's in, if it's, if I'm, if I'm just having fun with this, if it's the houses stay kind of by the same, you know, in the same degrees, you don't switch or anything. There's no real changing of the houses, like their in terms of like their size. Then if his if your Leo was in eighth house, by the time you're starting sixty, it's going to be in the tenth house. His is going to be in the first house. Okay. And so here's what's his okay. And then by the time you turn ninety, let's say you go ninety, his Taurus sign is going to be in the fifth house. I'm oh, sorry, the second. No, in the second house. Whereas your Leo sign, it's going to be. It's going to be not in. So his Taurus is going to be in. Mm, not Cancer, but in. His so his. It's going to be in technically a ninety degree move, right? Ninety degree like progression right? all those years so what's happening is by the time you are technically 90 years later which is a long time <laughs> um, his his Taurus will be now in a square sign a sign that's kind of technically would square his birth Leo sign which would then be uh, which would then for him it would be not Taurus it would be in Leo which is your natal placement of your son in his in your natal will be in Taurus you get what I'm saying so but it's almost like there's this thing so the the trick thing the, t the thing about the thing about these things is that if we were looking at it like this is so mathematical but at the same time not too much just enough that when you calculate it Eventually, when you get to, this is why when you get to know each other some somehow for a long time, we start to kind of understand each other more, and it shows in the charts, right? Um, let's say we looked at let's say quincunx placements. I don't know how that works right now, but quincunx is usually about 150 degrees, so completely like different. You have to adapt to each other, right? So let's say I'm gonna make calculation right now. I'm going to go into, let's say, sorry, one second. 
I'm gonna go, let's say your, let's say your son was in, I don't know, let's say your son was in, I don't know, Gemini, I don't know, 7,000. Okay, so you're more like Libra, you have more, you, you like communicating with people, it's a communication thing, is a thing for you. But the person you come across is in, um, so this is going to be, okay, let's say 7th house degrees, let's say, let's go 20 degrees. And just for the sake of consistency, your partner or the person you know, his son is in, Uh, Capricorn right so the person's Capricorn sign is in also 20 degrees right 20 degrees and it's going to be so if you're just a seventh house that means to most likely they're I mean depends on the person right depends on their year when they were born so it really depends that's the thing we need to consider as well is the year they're born so it could be anything right the point is when the sun moves into the three it doesn't matter really what house it's in but the point is your relationship is going to be changing so let's say his sun is capricorn 20 degrees i'm just going to say 12 right in the 12 right so let's say 90 years from now so you calculate three six nine so every every time you stick with the same degree sun in gemini it's going to go into cancer and then it's going to going to go into leo and then it's going to go, go into virgo we're talking just 90 years we're just going to for the sake of this whole thing we're going to just go 90 years uh that's his sorry that's your partner or whoever you're with in virgo in 90 years it'll be in a virgo approximately 20 degrees also by the time it's 7th, it's going to go into the 10th, okay? So finally into the 10th, and but yours is going to be after 90 years, or rather after your 90 years. So 90 years doesn't necessarily mean like your relationship is 90 years, but it's like, well, technically, yeah. Yeah, no, you go with the 90 years of your relationship. But you get what I'm saying. Does, I don't think the numbers matter in terms of like who's turning 90 or who's you know i mean the point is again if you've known each other long enough to old age then it'll be like you're fitting each other's lives a little bit more so let's look at your let's say your son was in capricorn 20 degrees in the 12th house so you have a more piscean sort of like more flexible typical you know instead of just your very stubborn kind of like very disciplined career oriented um very grounded uh, kind of capricorn sign it's in the 12th it was in the 12th house so we, we transition so 30 years later it's going to go into aquarius then it goes into pisces and finally it's going to go into aries right and by that time so yours was in the 12th house so you go 90 years from that and it's going to go into the third house so your 10th house and your third house is still going to be the same it's going to still be quick comps to each other but if you look at this one um the third house placement the fact that it's a third house placement it's gemini it coincides with your son's sign placement and his or their uh, son. Okay, so now your sorry, no, now your son in the tenth house in Virgo is going to coincide with their son sign placement. Do you see that? So you were born. Let's summarize that this little little part here. So your son was in Gemini, twenty degrees, seventh house. Nine years later, it's going to be Virgo in the tenth house. Okay, keep that in mind. Their sun in Capricorn, haha, was in 20 degrees, 12th house, but then 90 years later from their chart, it's going to be Aries in the third house, which is ruled by Gemini. 
So you're kind of going with each other's sign. So there's something about the 90 degree mark. I believe there's something to do with that. It's almost like it's 90 degrees is kind of like a completion. And here's the funny thing, numerologically speaking, nine is the number of completion. Is that amazing? You see the math behind it? So I'm like, I love you, Robert Gray. <laughs> Um, and I'm just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying Robert Grant. For those who don't know Robert Grant, he's this amazing guy who does math stuff. I'm not really into the math stuff, but I'm okay with it. Um, <laughs> before I was so like, <coughs> when I was younger, yes. But I think when I was like around 30, which is around when my son was in Scorpio, or at least when I progressed, that feeling was just like, I hate the details. But now it's in Sagittarius, so I'm more into the mastery of things. I've already gone past that energy of Scorpio. Now it's like, you know, so I, I'm willing to accept that. I don't like to still do too much math, just enough. So there's something about the 90 degree mark, which again, if you summarize, it's nine, zero, or in this case, zero. There's some, I think I saw a post where I didn't watch it, but in zero degrees, he talks about, Mark Robert Grant was talking about zero degrees being the degree of God. So it's back to wholeness. So that ties in with our relationship with each other as humans. When we reach the age of 90, or at least 90 years of our time, from our age with theirs, something will happen. I would say, to coincide with the whole thing, I would say, but it, if you've known each other for 90 years, which is a very long time, that's a sense of completion right there. And it's interesting because most people don't get to that point. I'm not saying that we need to get to that point. I'm not saying like, I don't want to die young. No, no. I'm just saying given the chance. When I say chance, I don't mean like by luck. I mean when we are connected and with the earth, most likely the things that will happen is that we're not in a hurry to do anything. We're not forcing anything. So therefore, Dying would be a little bit more, at least right now with how ha what's happening. 90 degrees, uh, dying would just be an old age thing. And people, uh, there are still people out there are afraid of dying. And it's true, it's a fact, it's a normal thing. Yes, but it's not less, any, it's not any less uh, scary. Um, but the fact that you'll be coming to this completion 90 years later, if you get to know someone that far off in you know in life then it's a sense of this completion you are completing each other that's it kind of makes sense right so <laughs> i think this is why people who reach the age of 90 when they're still in a relationship like romantic usually or even friends they just feel like they complement each other now it's they understand each other more have you ever noticed that so it's like this whole interesting thing right so yeah, I bet you that's happened a lot more in the past. When people live longer, we don't think they live longer. We think that we live longer now because of medicine and all that stuff, with all that the drugs and all that stuff. But I think it did. It was more predominant, common back then, right? You should technically only die of natural causes. Anything else is egoic. Anything else is separation. It's fragmented. And it's not a bad thing. It's not about good or bad. It's just when that's what it is. And that's how we learn, right? We learn from the mistakes of the past. Um, anyways, the point is, this whole video is like the whole 90 degree mark. This, it's like a cool thing. 90 degree mark, 90 years old, 90 years relationship. Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting thing. I thought, oh, okay, cool. Anyways, thought I'd just share that. It's just a little tidbit that I just came to me. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> So when we allow ourselves to be one with nature, one with the universe, it's this connection that we have that most likely might happen. Getting to know someone, I mean, is that amazing? Living, not, it's not about living long, it's about getting that sense of like, oh, now we understand even, I'm not saying waiting for that. The point is that you don't have to wait for that to happen. And the point is, we can choose to work with our differences 
by not looking at it as different. It's just like it is what it is. Right? And you're looking at it from the objective of like there is no objective. It's certain a certain sense of neutrality by being present, by being grounded. The fact that I'm talking right now is stimulating the laws of thoughts. But um, and when we go into the stillness, not necessarily quietness per se, but yes, also that. You'll start to sense it. So, I might post a video on, like, I, you look at my video, if you, if you look at some of my old videos, I did one where I sat in the snow and I was doing some of the, the Wim Hof method stuff. I keep mentioning it because it's like the cold is something that has taught me to be present because you're surrendering to it. And part of being present is a lot of it is, yeah, it's surrendering. People's ego doesn't like that. The ego goes like, surrendering? What? I'm going to die. Oh, no, I'm going to raise that. Right, so get into these, like this, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very uh, highly um, resistant. Well, because it's instinct, right? It's preservation, it's survival. But because of what it knows, the ego that us that we identify with quite often is still sometimes go back to especially if you're well you always go into it if you're unawakened but it's not this isn't a judgment it just means that you you're attached to that you think that is the reality right i was watching a video earlier that came to me it's like oh she talks about the same thing and she's like she's i think relating to the archons which i looked into it and i was just like it was uh, Gnosticism. It was in the Gnostic beliefs. They had different names for it, but basically it ties in with what I learned about shadow work, being present, but the names kind of coincided with mm, the, uh, the dark side, the dark, the, the dark forces, you know, the dark forces. They talk about this in movies too, but basically it's like, what the, he calls them the archons, but it's also, it feels like there's a connection between that and the, um, the draconians that went negative or rather stayed in the negative stayed in the lower vibration um yeah so but it was interesting because it tied in ev with everything she mentioned you know really just being quiet it's not really quiet being in the stillness and this is why i keep mentioning the whole cold shower thing it's not just cold shower even the ice bath when you surrender to it te nature will teach you mother cold will teach you and you, when you let it, you become this sort of like, first it's a shock, right? And you get used to it. When you practice it, and you go through the thing, and you listen, you listen, you practice, and you listen, you practice, and you listen, you practice. Yeah, that's what it is. Anyways, um, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I thought that was kind of an interesting thought. Doing these things right out of the cold shower is like much more, much more fun. Or as they said in one of my favorite movies, uh, Legally Bond. It's a <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.